Hey everybody, it's Michelle Caswell from Purely His. I have been trying to get on here for a few minutes now and it finally just worked. So I'm super excited about tonight's message and I'm excited about what we're giving away for all of you who shared. Look at this cool thing. It's a really awesome hand-painted wood sign that says I am Purely His that can be like hung on the wall pretty awesome and anyways we're giving this away to uh, somebody who won the drawing for uh, last week so really excited that you are all on here with me and just gonna wait a second till a few of you pop on and if I'm waiting too long I'm just gonna jump on anyways so thank you for joining us hey Everett I uh, just sent uh, your your lovely uh, fiance her shirt today and you guys should have it by Monday Hey, Sean. Nice to see you. <laughs> well, I'm actually sitting outside of a Starbucks right now in Medford while my husband is going in to get a coffee. And um, we're on our way to go watch one of our really good friends, who's also a Purely His leader, share his testimony tonight. So that's going to be awesome. There's going to be a bunch of Purely His people there and just a bunch of us believers who love Jesus. And um, anyways, this is going to be cool. So we're on our way to that. So I'm going to keep tonight kind of short. I always say that, but it usually ends up being 30 minutes anyways. But I'm going to try to keep it a little bit shorter than 30 minutes. So hey, Michelle. Hi, Keith. Hi, Michelle. I miss you guys. I want to see you guys. We got to get together. It's been way too long. Hey, Shannon. All right, so I'm just going to jump into things right now. Um, like I said, I'm on kind of a time crunch so that we can make it to this event on time. We're like pulled over at a Starbucks in Medford. Um, hey, Cammy, I see you. Um, <laughs> sup? Uh, anyways, okay, so... Um, I really have this message like burning inside me. So I'm gonna like slide these comments over to the side. Feel free to ask me any questions. Feel free to like say like where you are um, watching from. Feel free to share this as we're, as we're talking or share it afterwards. But I feel like I have a specific message for like the baby boomer generation. And um, of course, you know, it's gonna be for other people too. But um, so if you know anybody from that generation, um, I would just encourage you to share this right now. So, all right, I'm going to slide these over. Okay, so there has been this message that has been brewing in me for a while. But what really, like, um, what really brought it up is the other day I was at my office and I was selling um, some furniture out of there, just kind of like downsizing and stuff. And I had a couple come by. And they were, you know, I don't even know how they were, you know, I would say they're around 60, around like my parents' age. And um, we got into talking and they were asking like, so, you know, what kind of nonprofit is this? What do you guys do? And, and I started talking and they both kind of like looked at each other and they're like, yeah, we used to do that whole thing. Like we used to like totally go to church. Like we got saved in like the Jesus freak movement. And, and you know, back in the day, like it was all about the gifts of the spirit. And it was like, people are getting saved and people are getting baptized. And you know, and you could see like, as we started talking, they started like getting excited and like getting, you know, like set on fire basically. And they were like, but you know what? We, we don't even go to church anymore. Like, you know, I used to be a youth pastor and I used to be all involved, but we don't even go to church anymore because we've gone to all these churches and and they're just dead and they're just dry and and churches become an organization churches become a business you know it's it's three songs the announcements the pastor for 30 40 minutes you know one song at the end boom you're done no miracles no no um gifts of the spirit really being you know um shown to the congregation you know not a lot of people getting saved and it's just you know, I just rather not go to church. And so, but it was like when they were talking about it, it was like they were talking about the good old days, the good old days with Jesus and the good old days with the Holy Spirit and, and all of this stuff. And, and that is a conversation I've actually had with a lot of people, including my mom, including my dad. And, um, you know, my mom and dad were saved in that Jesus freak movement. Um, my mom was, was brought by her brother, you know, to like this revival. She got saved. My mom was actually the one who led my dad to the Lord. And um, I actually called my mom today and I was like, hey, so I'm getting ready to, to do this live tonight. And I really feel called to like talk to people from that Jesus freak movement. You know, the ones who are 
are like the baby boomer age, you know, the ones who were like super on fire for Jesus and now they're like, Meh, you know, I don't really go to church anymore. I'm not really involved or they are critical of church about how it's not the way it used to be. So they might go, but you know, it's just kind of like, well, we're going to church, um, but it's not how it used to be. And so anyways, I called her up. And I was like, hey, mom, I want to ask you like some different questions about that. I'm like, what did you see back then that was different than what you see now? Because she is back in church. She does go to church on a regular basis. Um, but I said, what was different about about back then than now? And she goes, because it was a move of the Holy Spirit. All the gifts were alive. She was like, and the gifts were like freely flowing. She goes, we saw miracles. Like every single time we ever went to church, people got saved. People were getting baptized. People were like on fire. You know, there were people in church that would, that were prophesying. There were people in, in church who were speaking in tongues and there were interpreters and there were, um, you know, miracles of healing and all this stuff. And people were so excited excited about you know being with church and now you know you go to church and it's so organized and it's like you know what happened and so I was asking her you know so what happened she goes well I just think it was a move of God back then and I said so you don't think God's moving the same and she goes well I don't know I mean I do think it has to be a move of God a move of the Holy Spirit but you know um I think that man quenches the spirit and I'm like Exactly. Man quenches the spirit because God is the same. God is the same yesterday as he is today as he will be tomorrow. And so, you know, we, we got talking a little bit more and, um, you know, I was just thinking about all these different conversations I've had. And, you know, my mom is just one of them. But, um, you know, it is disappointing when people have seen the move of God, when they have seen the gifts of the spirit, you know, exhibited, when they've seen people get healed and people getting saved and all that stuff to like go to a dead dry service. I get that that is disappointing, but what I really, um, believe the Lord is asking of that generation. I believe what the Lord is asking of the baby boomer generation of those who got saved in that Jesus freak movement is is that God is calling you back into the fold. Why don't you show us how it's done? You know, you're the ones who went through this whole whole revival experience, but the revival can take place in you again, and you can bring that back to life. You know, yes, there are people who are quenching the Holy Spirit because they don't know any different, but you do. And you know how to not quench the Holy Spirit. So why don't you show us how it's done? You know, my other thought too is like, my mom has, has done a lot of church hopping in the last several years. Like she came back to the Lord after 27 years of being away from him. She came back to him and um, has now been going to church for, let's see, it's two years behind me. So 11 years now. And she's gone to a ton of different churches. And and she's looking for what she had back then. And I just think to myself, for somebody like my mom and or, you know, other people who are feeling the way that she feels, it's like, why don't you start a church? What makes you think you have to have a 501c3 to start a church? Do you have a living room? Do you have a backyard? Is there a park nearby? Is there some water nearby where somebody can get baptized? Is there a street corner that you could preach on? You know, what What could you do to bring that back? What can you do to play that part? Instead of us just sitting around waiting for somebody to do something, waiting for the move of the Holy Spirit, why don't we just start a revival within ourselves and then start one in our home or our community you know there are so many ways that we can have an outlet we don't have to wait for somebody to do it for us we can actually create that ourselves and it was crazy so you know after I talked to my mom like this today you know we got off the phone and I called her back like about 15 minutes later when I had cell service again and um, and you know one of my last questions to her was um, what do you what do you think that we need to do to like bring that back and um, you know, how do you get back those feelings that you had before? And so anyways, when I called her back, she goes, well, I know how to get it back now. I'm like, I'm like, what's that? And she goes, she goes, gosh, just even talking about it, I could feel the fire like bubbling up in me. I could feel like the spirit bubbling. I was like, exactly. It's in you. And so it's like, we are the carriers of the Holy Spirit. We are the ones who start revivals. We can start a revival within ourselves, like within our own ministry in Purely His. We're about being all in with Jesus. We're we're about starting revivals like when you're all in with Jesus you're getting unstuck from anything in the way of that we don't wait for the move of the Holy Spirit we have the Holy Spirit in us we're the ones who are connected with him we're the ones who who have the gifts you know 
we're, we're the ones who, who have the privilege of praying with him. And we're the ones who have the choice to either quench the spirit or let him freely flow through us. And so, you know, and that part is not obviously not just for the baby boomer generation. That's for all of us. You know, we all are gifted by God and, and we need to allow him to use us. It's like, so if you think about, you know, what does it mean to like quench the spirit? It looks like this. So I'm sitting at Starbucks right now. And if I were to see somebody walk by, by who, you know, like, wow, they're obviously in pain, you know, and, and I have this thought like, gosh, wouldn't it be cool if I just like got out and prayed for healing for that person, but then I don't. And I just watch this person limp on by that's quenching the Holy spirit. When I'm at church and all of a sudden I have this picture in my head of me, like going up to the altar and getting on my knees, even though nobody else is doing it and, not, and it's not technically an altar call, you know, but I choose not to do what I see in my head. That's quenching the Holy spirit spirit, you know, and, and just sitting and waiting around for somebody else to do it. It's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. No matter how many, you know, churches you go to, if individuals, if, if us as individual Christians aren't allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through us, to, to heal through us, to, you know, cast out demons, to raise the dead, to, to preach, to prophesy, you know, to start new works like apostles. Like, you know, if, if we don't step into that calling and we just fit into this church box that man created, it's just gonna, not be very attractive, you know, I mean, especially to people who have seen it and experienced it like my mom, you know, and I just think we just can't wait for something to happen. Let's not wait for a revival to take place. Why don't we create a revival? Why don't we have that revival within ourselves and then create that environment around us? So I just really want to encourage you to not wait for things to happen. We can make it happen. Like the Lord wants to make it happen through us. It's just stop being a chicken. Stop being a chicken and stop sitting back just looking at what isn't happening, looking at, you know, with a critical eye of, uh, well, it's not the way it used to be, or it's not the way it should be. Well, you know what? Be the change that you wish to see in this world. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. Let's do it together. I know I'm going to do it. And if I look a little crazy for it, or if people are like, oh, that's a little out of order. It's not technically an altar call. Or, you know, in this church, we don't all stand up and raise our hands during worship or, you know, oh, you know, this kind of church, we don't really speak in tongues when we're praying or whatever, I'm just not going to allow those kind of um, obstacles and those kind of barriers to hold back what Jesus really wants to do. Um, I recently, like we moved like three years ago and we live on the river. And I remember when we got there, I was walking on that river and there's this one tree that I always call the wedding tree. And we're going to get like a stage in front of it and people are going to get married there. But also the vision that I had was that... Um, you know, that God was going to do a revival there. And I remember walking on, on the river, you know, not on the river. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> like Jesus walked on water, I walked on the river. No. Um, anyways, my husband and I were walking down by the river and I was telling my husband, I was like, watch man, I'm going to do a revival on this river. Watch, there's going to be a revival here. It's going to be so awesome. And then I remember saying to him, I don't even know what a revival is. I've never even been to a revival. I've not read about revivals. You know, I, I don't even know what it is. I was like, I think we're going to do one here. I mean, what would it take? I mean, we just have like a stage. We could have like a microphone, like, you know, getting people to like repent. We can have worship. We can have baptisms right here in the river. And so anyways, Matt and I are actually going to plan something like that at our place. So be watching out for that because that's something that we're going to do. Um, and we're just going to allow the Lord to use us. Like we're just going to do what the Bible says and allow God to use us. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing. So don't don't wait for somebody else to do it. Create your own outlet. Be who God's called you to be. Allow his Holy Spirit to speak through you, to use you. And, and let's do this thing. Like, let's just stop waiting around for some move of God to happen when God is moving right this second. God is in us and he is moving. And now we just need to allow him to move through us. That's being a real Christian. That's not quenching the spirit. So the next time you have that thought, like, wow, you know, it would be cool if I could go pray for that somebody, for that person, go do it. If you know, wow, I have this picture in my head. I have this like word that I'm getting for this person, but I'm too embarrassed to say it knock that stuff off. Just go and say it to the person.
it's just amazing to be like used by God. I love being used by God and I love encouraging other people to be used by him as well. So anyways, go let the Lord use you. All right. So we have something cool to give away tonight. Look at this cool thing. It's a wood painted sign. It says, I am purely his. And somebody from our, uh, from the people who have been watching won this. And I don't remember who it was. Hold on. I just looked it up a second ago. Oh, geez. What was her name? I can't believe I just forgot her name. <laughs> I don't know if I can look this up while I'm on here. I can't. Well, shoot. Anyways, there's a lady who um, is a part of our ministry, and um, I have to now like go back into my thing to see who it was that got chosen, and then I'm going to post it in the comments, and that person is going to get this really awesome sign, and I'm going to send it to her. I know it was a her. I just cannot remember her name all of a sudden. <laughs> Crazy. Anyways, um, so I'm going to cut this short tonight, and um, I just love you all. I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for sharing, and um, I hope that you are encouraged. I know that I am. I'm, I'm not going to wait, so I hope you won't wait either, and let's just do this together. Let's like create a revival right where we're at, and let's do this thing. Let's see our world around us change in Jesus' name. Amen. Have an awesome night. Okay, bye. <laughs>